Look at my shirt. This shirt explains the story. The reason why I say this shirt explains the story is because SmackDown Live today was like a like a perfect video game. It's like it's a perfect Mario game or any type of video game that you play. And you enjoy it. You want more. Some things may not make sense. There could be a few glitches here and there. A few problems here and there. Smackdown does have a few little problems, but... Nothing really negative or bad happened on Smackdown. And it was pretty much... Just a barrage of title matches. We only had three matches... Mostly interviews. We started off with the returning John Cena. Now, I will admit, as much as I... I wouldn't say hate John Cena, I'm just not really his biggest fan. As much as Cena gets on our nerves most of the time when he comes out and he, he's always in the top spot, as much as he is in that situation, we got to respect what the man has done. That's one thing. we got to respect what the man has done for the company and how much, you know, shit he's gone through. Now, what I liked is that, you know, he brought out the, the, the news and the rumors that people were talking about, like the possibilities of him turning heel, the possibilities of him retiring, Moving on from the new era. The new era is not John Cena. It does not is not suited for John Cena. That type of thing. John Cena took it all up. Excuse me for that split second. I actually sneezed. But um, SmackDown was. We had half hour of a tag team match. 15 minutes of a women's match and 30 minutes of a main event. Well, 30 minutes is pretty much a half hour. 40 minutes is like an hour and a half. And we had mostly promos and uh, well, not really promos. We didn't really and, and we didn't really have much of um, we just didn't have a lot of matches on the show tonight. There's not not a lot happened. They were just. Obviously, ending these feuds, or obviously these feuds that they had now, they're ending them, and they're starting up fresh. Well, they're obviously starting up fresh with Alexa Bliss, because of after what we saw, and they're re and they're continuing the John Cena, AJ Styles feud. Like this is the third time they're gonna meet in a one-on-one -on -one match. But overall, SmackDown was pretty good. The first match was the Fatal Four Way for the. SmackDown Tag Team Titles, The Usos. Now, here's the thing. I kind of heard this from a lot of other people. And I kind of had to tend to agree. Why were The Usos in that match? Why were The Usos in the match? Like, why couldn't we have gotten Ascension or Breezango? Vod Villains? Like, Aiden English. Aiden English lasted a while. He didn't get eliminated straight away like Simon Gotch did. But... I wish we saw somebody else besides um, the Usos. And listen, I don't mind the Usos as, as like with the heel antics that they've done, but why would you add them? Seriously, after everything that they have done, why would you add them? But I guess that's a different story. But in the end, uh, Heath and Rhino got eliminated. Obviously, how many more? How many more opportunities are Heath and Rhino gonna get? When is enough enough? How many more shots are Heath Slater and Rhino gonna get? Seriously, enough. That's all I gotta say. Enough. No more of this. I'm just one man. I'm a one man band, and Heath Slater, Heath and Rhino coming out. Listen, I get it. This is the first time Heath Slater has been pushed 
in God knows how long. But you don't need to force this guy down. If you really want him to get over, which he has, if you really want to build him and Rhino up as a, as a team, you got to make them go through every team. You don't just keep rewarding them title matches. Yes, he slayed as Harley been pushed. I get that. Yes, he's been a jobber for probably like five years ever since he's been in the company. I get it. But you don't need to jam this guy getting title matches. Like, how many rematches have, have Heath and Rhino had? Three? Now this is their fourth? Seriously, New Day... New, New, New Day get a lot of title shots, and Heath Slater and Rhino get a title shots. People complain about, you know, New Day getting a lot of title shots, and Heath Slater and Rhino get title shots nearly every single time. Now, there's something else I'm going to get to in a minute, and... There's something else I'm going to get to in a minute. And, um... Yeah, Heath, and Lino, Heath and Rhino got eliminated because he Slade apparently tripped off the top rope. <laughs> Dumbass. And then he ran into a super kick by... Was it Jimmy or Jay? I can't remember. But in, either way, the Usos got the win. Heath and Rhino were eliminated. The American Alpha took out the... Usos. O's and then and then Randy Orton and Luke Harper they were playing up the what the uh new day new new day thing. Now here now this is the problem. Listen, I have no problems with American Alpha. I really do not. But I had a serious problem with seeing Randy Orton lose the titles. He took the pin. Randy Orton took the pin, and he won these titles. He won these titles for the Wyatts. He won those titles. With an RKO to Heath Slater. He retained them. With an RKO to Rhino. No, I think I got it the other way around. Rhino took the pin for them to lose the title. And then Heath Slater took the pin in their, re in their second rematch. Sorry, I got mixed up. But, why have them lose in a three-week spam? I mean... That just pretty much ruined everything that you've done with them ever since they won the titles. I see them building towards Randy Orton walking out on the White family now. And I know a lot of people don't like... A lot of people like it when Randy Orton's by himself. I, I do too. I like when Randy Orton's by himself. I get it. Randy Orton has made the White family great. But the problem is, why is Randy Orton having to be the one to help the Wyatts get over? Why can't the Wyatts get over themselves? Dodo, yes, WWE haven't booked them right, but since they're on SmackDown, and hopefully when Eric Rowan comes back, you can build the Wyatt family up without Randy Orton. You don't need Randy Orton to build up the Wyatt family. Seriously, build them up themselves. They don't need a veteran, a, 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 a veteran like Randy Orton to, to pretty much get them over for them. That made zero sense to me, and it didn't make sense that Randy Orton lost the titles. Why did he have to take the pin? Why did Randy have to take the pin even though he retained the titles twice? Why couldn't it have been Luke Harper? Oh, Luke Harper did. Luke Harper accidentally knocked Randy Orton off the, uh, the off, off the ropes. Really, I wish Randy Orton was the one that knocked Luke Harper off the rope. Seriously, what was the point? It was pretty much a slap to the face to Randy Orton after everything he has done for the Wyatt family. Seriously, I, I, I did not like that at all. I'm sorry, I did not like Randy Orton taking the pin. Congrats to the American, uh, congrats to American Alpha though, but I did not like seeing Randy Orton taking a pin, a pinfall. Because 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 they're building ascension, dissension for him, and the Wyatt family. Next match was Alexa Bliss versus Becky Lynch. I'm not getting into the James Ellsworth thing with Carmella, please. I would rather I would never want to see that segment again. Seriously, I I hate Ellsworth, and I I, I can't stand James Ellsworth as I called him James Worthless, and I can't stand Carmella now. I'm done with Carmella. I have done everything I possibly could trying to get into this woman, but her hanging around with James Worthless is doing me no good. I I, I, 
I'm looking at a pair of jobbers for SmackDown Live. A pair of jobbers in the making. Alexa Bliss versus Becky Lynch. You know, I like these two women. I like Becky more. Alexa Bliss, I'm kind of a bit iffy on her, but she's getting, she's starting to get on me a bit. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a way bigger fan of, a, of Becky, though. But we see this La Luchadora come back out again. Even though we know La Luchadora was Becky, but this time around we don't see Becky in the outfit. We see her come out, and she helps Alexa Bliss win. Now, a lot of people are telling me, like, it's a black chick. Now, first people are telling me it could be Eva Marie. Listen, I saw the look on her. She's black. No racism intended. She's got dark skin, and it's not Eva Marie. Eva Marie doesn't have dark skin. She has white skin. It's not Mickey James either, because Mickey James has white skin. My only guess it could be Tamina or Naomi. Or could or there or could be or it even could be Ember Moon. They could pull Ember Moon out of NXT. They could pull en Ember Moon right out of NXT straight onto SmackDown. Now I think SmackDown would fit wonders for Ember Moon, not Monday Night Raw. But I don't think it will be Ember Moon. But if they pull Ember Moon out of NXT, do you know what this means? NXT is going to have no one to take down Oscar. They might have to do like a flip. They, they it, when Billy Kay takes on Peyton Royce, they may have to like pull the trigger and actually have Billy Kay take the title. But I doubt it. I doubt it's Ember Moon. I doubt it's Ember Moon. But if it is Ember Moon, I'll be very surprised if it's Ember Moon. Because that would be shocking. I have heard reports that Liv Morgan could be pulled out of the NXT to go to Monday Night Raw. Please, Liv Morgan. Stay in NXT. That would be the worst decision of your life. Anyway, I'm going to move on. There were a few more promos. Miz had another promo with, uh, what's her name? Renee Young. Dean Ambrose came from behind and attacked Dean Ambrose. And we had Baron Corbin have his little segment. And then we had the main event, which was a very, very good main event. I really enjoyed this main event. And in the end, AJ Styles got the win. Baron Corbin did the end of days to Dolph Ziggler. And then AJ Styles came out of nowhere into a phenomenal forearm. And then pins Dolph Ziggler. Baron Corbin rolled out of the ring. Listen, I love that match. That match was absolutely amazing. All three of these matches were very good. Now, I will say the only bad thing is, like I said, with the whole Randy Orton thing. I don't like it how he had to take the pin. Why was it him? But I'm not going to rant on about it. But the La Luchador thing, I could go on for a while saying who it could be. Out of, out, of, out of the three names I mentioned, Naomi, Tamina, and Ember Moon, I would more want it to be Ember Moon. Because I think pulling her out of NXT could do wonders for SmackDown. But then again, it might do bad for NXT. But that is the thing. You need to take, like, an Ember Moon out of NXT so that will force Triple H... To start using Mandy Rose, Nikki Cross, and all those other women that have been held back for a while. That's how you get these other women on. But and, and but listen, I'm like I've said, I'm totally indifferent with NXT how they use how how they handle things. But I would not be surprised if it's not Ember Moon. I don't think it will be Ember Moon. I think it will be Tamina. Or Naomi. Naomi's just turned face, like when the draft started, the, the where the brand split started, but the brand split started. Jeez, I got to get my words right. And so I think it could be Tamina. I I think it could be Tamina, or they might pull 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 one on us and actually have it being Ember Moon, or as what some people say, it could be somebody we've never seen before. But anyway, the the things we saw on. The main event was pretty, pretty good. My favorite spot was the end of days into the zigzag. Alrighty, guys, that has been my SmackDown Live review. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you guys next time.